Namaste. So, Natasha Anand here. I am feeling uh, really called to um, just share a little reading that I did, particularly for... Um, so, it's really being brought to my attention that those of us who really work in the community, who work with people, healers, not just healers and, and teachers, but... Um, but also, you know, social workers, community workers, youth workers. Um, I've been working in the voluntary sector, I've been working in the community, running a social enterprise for the last 12 years, and I have witnessed um, the work that goes on in the community, the incredible work that goes on in the community, and this is what very much inspired me to... Um, to start working in the community was seeing how many amazing people and organizations they were that is that are just really doing the work on the ground you know uh, we have public institutions which are really important and provide that infrastructure that support um, but it's the people that that work on the ground it's you community youth workers social workers um, nurses doctors that really um, that are working in the community that you, you're the point of call for your community. You're the people that your community goes to when times get tough, when the shit hits the fan. And um, you play a really important role. And so I really honor that. And um, this transmission is particularly for you, but for, for all of us also. So today I was told that I have to share this message because we're getting to a point now with this um, global pandemic um, and lockdown and quarantine where we've been spending a lot of time on our own and um, you know a lot of us have been feeling the ups and downs of the journey, the overwhelm, um, the confusion, the boredom, all of that. But there's a fundamental fear that's still rooted and that's um, coming, rising up now as we are nearing the, um, shall we say, maybe relaxing of the quarantine or we're, we're nearing... Um, you know, a, a sort of end point of this global pandemic journey. Um, and there's a fear that's coming up, which is around how are we going to do this? How are we going to bring and knit the community back together? How is our work going to be moving forward? We've got to go out there back into the world. Um, and there's some fear around actually still contracting um, the virus but also there's a there's another fundamental fear around what I can see what I'm channeling what I'm pulling through around how we as a community are going to actually come together how we're going to be able to come together to create this new way so we've been talking about this a lot but in reality As humanity there's a dimension to humanity which is which is divided which is fragmented and it's this that's coming to our attention okay we want to create the new way but we are still fragmented we are still a divided society you know we, we still there are still fractions in the community and these kind of fears are taking us into a place of reimagining a future that isn't going, is going to be counterintuitive and counterproductive to the new way that we are already creating. It's like kind of like an opposing counterforce. So in order to really like envision the new way, we, we've just got to be it. We've got to just beam it out there. We've got to visualize it as an already fully actualized, realized vision of this is the new way, a harmonious community, a, um, 
a heart-led, heart-centered um, individual experience that comes together as a collective experience. Um, kindness, compassion, all those things that we want to see out there, we need to just see it, just visualize it as it's already fully realized form. And then that energy that we beam out is what's reflected back from the universe. That's how we create it. You know, by having doubt and fear, like, mm, I'm not sure, or how are we going to do this? That's, a, that's counteracting this vision that we are holding so there's a part of us that's holding this vision but then there's a part of us that has the fear so even within us we're having this opposing forces so to really come into that full manifestational power to envision this future that we know that we are creating we've got to really address this and look at this deeply what are those fundamental fears that are niggling away at us? Fears about the way that society is. Where do those fears come from? Where do those stories come from? Where do those beliefs come from? Are we still holding a belief that, um, I don't know, my friends aren't gonna get it? Or, um, you know, my community is just not there yet. Um, People just don't understand. Those are stories and those are beliefs that we hold that are kind of pointless because they don't really serve a purpose. They're just projecting out an energy which is tied into fear. And when we tune into that and we recognize that and we go, ah, oh, okay, I'm going to shift that. I'm going to come from a different perspective. That becomes irrelevant. It's irrelevant whether people get it or not. It's like all of that's irrelevant because... We're holding a vision where we are all in acknowledgement and understanding of what is. And we're all working together to bring this vision forward. And it, it's irrelevant who gets it and who doesn't. All of that is just judgment that's creating a counter, um, counteracting energy. And the other thing that's coming through is that, like, a part, I think a part of driving this fear is this weight of the world that many of us feel. So many of us who work um, at the grassroots in the community, because we've been doing this work for so long in a relatively kind of moderate group of people, like modest group, group of people, that it's often felt, you know, like the old me used to think, like, if I don't do it, who's going to do it? There's just a small group of us, like, we have to do it. And we feel the weight of the world on our shoulders. We really feel like this is our responsibility because no one else is doing it. And that burden, that's a burden that, 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 that snowballed and snowballed and snowballed. So when we get to this point now, it's like a pressure and there is fear being squeezed out of that pressure. Or what if I can't? What if we can't? What if we cannot bring the community back together? You know, what if we cannot rise up from this? What if others aren't going to join us in creating the new way? And we feel the weight of all of this on our shoulders because we feel like we're the only ones. And but the thing is that we're not the only ones. There are other people that are out there that may not be working in the community. They may not be social workers. They may not be youth workers. But they also feel that responsibility in their community because we're all community workers. We all live and work in our communities in some way, even if that's just holding space or smiling at somebody in the street. And we all feel that sense of responsibility. So this is the time to really let go of the burdens of that responsibility and come into the full actualization of the and, and the and the the unconditional love behind that responsibility, that trust that I'm, I'm, I'm here as a human. I've, I've, I heard the call and I came here and my responsibility is just to be me and to explore my beingness and my kindness and my compassion and my love and my light and shine that. And that's my responsibility. And then that connects with everybody else's own individual responsibility. Together we have this incredible abundance of heart-centered love and interaction with each other and we can create this vision together so 
you know, it's time for us to really down into our personal responsibility and really clear all of this, like, well, I think I need to do that. And it's my responsibility to make other people feel better. And it's my responsibility to like do this work in the community because the only real responsibility we have is really towards ourself. Even as social workers, even as youth workers, is to to, to work on this, to, for this to be an integrity and an alignment because then this is going to do the work then this is naturally going to be that solidarity, that grounding, that trust that those people that we're working with, that they're going to draw on. And many of us that are empathic and that, that are in this line of work, you know, we, we've, we have, a lot of us have this natural tendency to really feel that weight and get burdened by it. And, and succumb to addictive patterns as a way of coping with all of this, as a way of being okay, you know? A lot of us have, um, you know, used certain drugs like alcohol and cannabis and all kinds of substances to cope with all of this. Food also, sugar, you know, all these... Um, these substances that help us to soothe and to cope has been very has been very kind of prevalent. I see a lot of people in my field who, you know, who've had to felt that they've had to turn to something to soothe them. It might be video games, it might be social media, getting sucked into social media. Um, and this tendency I've seen and I can feel and I know there's a really strong message coming through about being very mindful of of falling into those patterns during this time and and really seeing that the, the, these coping mechanisms the root of that is coming from all of that stuff that we've absorbed all of that, the weight of that responsibility, all those burdens that we've absorbed that have probably triggered other bird, other trauma in our life, other karma that we've experienced in our life that's all being triggered. And then for us, the soothing and protection is to come in and to just cope. And we're on our own, in our home, and it's easy for us to just cope, to just turn to the food, to the alcohol. To the smoking marijuana and I know because I've done it and I know that we're carrying a lot and this is simply a way of coping so this message is coming through really really strongly that those of us who are working in the community are going to have a really big job to do coming out of this and you know, we're the ones that our community is really going to be turning to for support. We're the ones that are leading and guiding the path. And it's our time, it's our turn to utilize this opportunity, this time to really work on that fundamental stuff that we're carrying, really clear the way for us to be fully in our power, to envision this world that we're creating from that place of knowing, from that place of, you know, vision. We see the potential of the community, of our families, of our tribe. We see it and we, we give so much to that. Let's come back to this opportunity to be with ourselves, to do this inner work on ourselves, so that when it's time to re-emerge, we can do that in our full power, in our full sovereignty. Sovereignty is our own free will, the exercising of our free will and choice to be us. To be soul. To, to, to experience the beingness of soul. To be liberated through that. And not be bound by the, the burden. The 
karma, the that dense, stagnant energy. Let's shake it off. It's time now for that self-care and self-practice to take itself to new heights so that we can ourselves be the vision that we are creating. Hari Om Tat Sat.